This may look like any other regular poster plastered around the city, except this one is specifically searching for a University of Toronto student to donate eggs to a couple hoping to start a family. The City News viewer who says she located several of these posters inside of a U of T building expressed concern, asking if this was legal, as Canada is set to introduce new fertility regulations. The viewer says she located three posters listing 10 criteria for a prospective donor inside the Ontario Institute for Studies and Education. She was concerned it was targeting students who may think they could make money by selling their genetic material. City News reached out to the couple but did not hear back. There's so many obstacles and there's so, it's like a roller, surrogacy is a roller coaster ride. So I get it. Joseph Tito became a father just one year ago via surrogate. His journey to fatherhood was a tumultuous one, so he understands why a couple would use creative measures to find an egg donor. With all the loop, with all the, 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 the craziness of trying to have a family, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Health Canada says fertility laws were designed with concerns about the exploitation of donors in mind. For that reason, it is a criminal offense to pay egg and sperm donors. The couple's poster doesn't mention pay and stays on the right side of the law, says a fertility doctor. The idea in Canada is that we're trying to be altruistic. There are new federal fertility rules. All are expected to go into effect by spring 2020. Canada is saying the changes will strengthen safety and administration, including what specific reimbursements for expenses donors can receive, but none addressing a loophole that allows clinics to pay for eggs and sperm sold from other countries, while that remains illegal here. This fertility lawyer calls Canada's laws some of the most stringent in the world and would like to see Canadian donors compensated. For their eggs, not for their sperm, but for their time, for their inconvenience, and in the case of egg donors, for the risk they're taking on. Cohen says 95% of the sperm used in Canadian fertility clinics comes from outside the country, including the U.S., where donors are paid. But imported genetic material doesn't come with important health information. We don't know how many times someone has donated. We don't know the outcomes. We don't know if that woman who's donated OVA, if she had proper health insurance. We just don't know anything about her. And we can make sure if we use Canadian donors that they have OHIP, we can make sure that they're tracked properly. Our experts also spoke about what egg donors and recipients need to consider prior to starting their fertility journey. For that, you can head to our website, citynews.ca, where you'll find more information on these upcoming regulations. For City News, I'm Faiza Amin.